Hi everyone, trust you all are doing well. And what we're going to do in this lesson is, we, is like we said in the previous one, we're going to create the create method where a user can actually now create a thread. And when they click this button, they can come to this part right here. All right, there's a couple of middleware that we will add here. So as the user must be authenticated, all right, and we want the user to be verified before they can actually create this thread. So basically we need two middleware. The user must be authenticated and the email must be verified. All right, so that's the kind of things that we're going to do in this lesson. All right, so let's go to Visual Studio Code or whatever code editor you use and let's get cracking. All right, the view that we've seen there, this comes with the installation. So as you can see, that will be under the route discussion page controller create class right here. So it will be this one right here. All right. So what we want to do now is we want to actually create the route inside our uh, threads group right there. All right. So let's do that. All right. So underneath our show method right there, or just underneath our create method. All right. So let's just do a route. And then we're just going to do a get route. And we can do a create. All right, so this will be thread slash create. And then we're just going to do a thread controller. Actually, the easiest thing to do for me normally, I just copy the top one down. All right, in this case, it's a get route. So it's the same route, it's not a post route. So it's the same one. So same type of route. And I just change these things. So this will be go to uh, our thread controller, the create method. And we're just going to call it threads create like this. All right, so let's go to our thread controller and to under the create method right there. So let's go there. So as you can see, we got our create method and we got an index. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to return a view. Okay, so when the user get to the this route, we just want to return a view, and the view will basically be as you can see pages threads dot create. Okay, so we're just following the same pages threads. And we're just going to go to the create route right there. All right. As you can see, the route is there. But now the thing is, we need to pass through the categories as well, because the user must choose from the categories. All right. So let's do that. All right. So we're just going to call this categories like this. And we will just want to get all the categories. Just make sure you import it at the top as well. Right, let me just put a comma there. Right, just make sure you import it this as well. But if you want an extension like I do normally, I just press Control Alt and I. That just imports a class. As you can see, it's already imported. Now the extension for that is, as someone have asked, I just quickly want to show you. It is called PHP a namespace resolver. This one right here. All right. So if you want to know how to do that, actually you can just import with Alt, Control, and I, and PHP namespace resolver. So I'm just putting this in for people that might want to know later. Okay. So basically, all you do is just press Control I on the class on the the class uh, name, name itself, and it will actually just import it at the top for you. All right, so the next one that we need is we need tags as well. So we're just going to add the tag so the user will be able to get the tags. Okay, so tags all. All right, so we want all the tags right there. Okay, so let me just go to our explorer again. All right, so basically, this is the ones that we want to pass through to that view right there. All right, so this is our create view that comes with the starter. Uh, template so that one so what we want to do is we want to copy everything in this view right here and under our pages threads the hate method right here we just want to paste it in there okay so that's what we want to do now all right so let me just show you so go to your threads that create right there copy everything on the inside and just go to your pages threads dot create right here and just paste it in there now what we can do now is we can delete this threads folder 
okay? Because you don't need it anymore. All right, and you go to your web route. This will give you an error now because that is deleted. We can actually delete this as well. So those two top ones, because we created those routes up here. Okay, so we don't need them there. And it will give you an error as well. Right, so we got that all set up. So now track controller, we're returning a view. Okay, so let me just do this. Okay, so it's all done. Now the next part that we want to do is we want to actually go to that view right there. All right, now as you can see, we're here. So if we want to click this button, we want to go to that view. So we obviously have to update this button now to have the right uh, route in it. Okay, so let's go there. All right. In your create method, you will see a X partial site nav. So in that site nav, go in there, you will see a start a discussion button. All right. So in there, we actually want to create add our threads dot create. All right. Just remember, this is the route that we created right here. It will be the route will be threads dot whatever we put in here. Okay. So that's basically this in our site nav right there. Okay. So this will be a start a discussion. So the button is supposed to take us now to that view. So let's refresh. So let's click on the button. All right, so this is giving us an error under our page controller. This threat create does not exist. So that is, uh, it comes from, as we deleted the methods in there, but let me show you. So if we go to our page controller now, just remember this method, this doesn't exist anymore. So we can delete that and we can delete this one as well. All right. So under our site nav, this is supposed to work. Threads.create. Look at that route right here. That's this one. This route and this route is clashing now. So I'm just going to delete. Now I'm just going to uncomment it for now. Just these two. Just going to uncomment them because they're clashing now with this threads dot create and that threads index right there. Okay. All right. So now it works. I'm, I'm kind of going to leave it in there for you guys so that you can see, like, remember the code get passed from top to bottom. All right. So that's why we kind of get the errors there. Right, so we got our threads dot index. So let's go to our create method inside here. Just remember, like I said, we imported the category right there. Just make sure you import your tag as well. So app models tag as well. Otherwise, you're going to get an error again. So let's go back, refresh. Hopefully, this time it works. So if we click our start create, as you can see, we get to our threads dot create view right there. So everything is good. So now what we need to do is we need to add another a method in another input right here for our tag. So we obviously can choose our category. Now next part is we need to be able to choose our tags as well. But for that, we're going to use a JavaScript library to do that. Okay. But before we do that, so let's go in our uh, create method. Let me just close off other the other other things folders files right there so not to distract us let me just do this right so this is what we have right now the avatar right now uh, in our controller right here i actually need to add that middleware so public function this this construct all right so we want to return the middleware so return this middleware right the middleware that we want to return as you guys remember i don't want the user to see the create page if they're not authenticated so we're just going to bring in the authenticate so you can do obviously like this just you can put auth okay i'm not going to do that i'm not going to follow just bring in the whole class so authenticate so you don't have to do this all right so authenticate uh, class all right you know what, I'm going to show both, but, okay, and the other one is, okay, so let me just create an array right here. So that is the Authenticate class, and the other one is Ensure 
email is verified clause. Okay. Now, this will be only valid. I just only want this to be this one, right? Double. Okay. And I only want this to be on the create. Okay. And so basically the create, the store, the edit, update, and delete. I only want them to be on those. So the only two that's left is the index and the show method that I don't want this this uh, middleware to be on. So we can either do it one of two ways. We can do the only, okay? So we can put an only with an array of all the ones that we want to only to be in, or we can do the accept. In this case, the accept is the better option because there's only two methods that we want to be in the accept one. But if we had to do the only, we had to put all the other ones in. So it's just kind of more work. So in this case, we're only going to do the accept, the index, and the show right here. Okay. So this middleware must be only applicable to, to all the other ones inside this class, the thread controller class, except for the index and the show. All right. So let me just show you the other one. So we can do the very same thing, and you could have typed in here. Just auth like this and verify like this. Okay, so you could have typed it like that. Now, this comes from the kernel. This auth right here, let me just open the kernel right here. All right, not that, not the interface. Okay, like this. All right, this comes from the kernel. As you can see, it actually just uh, put a full path to the ensure email is verified class and the auth just do the same thing it just should the points and directs basically to that authenticate class that's all it does nothing special both of them are the same this one just points to that class and this one also just points to that class in here so if someone comes in and they're a bit new for me, they will immediately see where this class is and they actually can go to the class itself from the controller. Okay? But they cannot do this for this. Okay? So if they're a bit new to the framework. Just preference, but yes, you can do this. All works. Okay? So that works. That's all that is. So I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm just showing for the people that might want it to do that way. So that's why I'm showing it to you. Right. So now let's go and see if we can actually go to this route right here without actually logging in. As you can see, if we click the button right there, we're supposed to get the login screen now. As you can see, we got the login screen. So let's log in as Joe at example.com password okay so let's just log in yep it's definitely whoops this need to be john not joe john at example.com and password right so let's log in so as you can see we get there all right so when we log in as john now the next thing is as you is when we do the seeder, we actually verify the user as well. So let's go to our database. Now, as you can see, when we migrate the database, you see this email is verified. That is the column that we check if the user is verified or not. Right? So this is the table right here. So as you can see, John, at example, it is email is verified. If this was null, it will not work as well. So let me just make it null. All right? Let me just do that and let me see if John can actually create a. Now, in order for this to work right here, the ensure emails is verified, we need to actually go to our user model right here and just implement must verify like this. Okay, that right there, we just want to bring it in here as well. Okay, otherwise, it will not work all right so the next part let's go to our create method right here all right inside our create method we want to actually just loop over our category so 
age for each uh, categories. So this categories right here is coming from our controller, this one right here, okay? So let me just close off that route. There's category. Hit the curly like this. All right, so I just want to put the select category on top and just use one of these and just delete this right there. Now in here, I actually just want to do the category name right here. All right, and I want to call in that method inside our category model. Okay, so in here, I'm just going to do the category ID. So we're going to make use of the categories ID. So let me just show you where this method is. So if we go to our category model right here, this name right here. So that's it. That's the method that we're calling. The other one is obviously the ID right here. So I'm just going to put this ID like this. So we're calling on this. Now the thing is, this helps if you want to change anything on this uh, property right here. You can do it here instead of in all your views. That's why it's kind of useful to do it like that. All right, so let me just uh, save it. And in our view right here, as you can see, if we select the category, you will see now we have all our categories right here. All right, that's good. All right, so the next part that we want to do is we want to add our tags in there. Now, what I want to do, let me just copy this one down because I don't want to use this actually. Uh, I want to use a JavaScript library that will be able to handle our tags, but I think this lesson will get a little bit too long. So what we're going to do is in the next one, we will actually just create a select, uh, multi-select for our tags right here. Right, and then we can actually just finish off this, right? Because it's not too much to do still. We just need to create the store method and everything as well. But I think we need to do this in its own lesson because we need to actually bring in a library, right? So that will be it for this lesson, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. And if you like the video, please give it a like. If you don't, please give it a dislike. And if you have any feedback, questions, or anything, please ask them for me in the comment section, and I will see if I can try and help you out. All right. Thank you, guys. I'll see you in the next one, where we're just going to bring in a library to handle a multi-select uh, Alpine.js style or JavaScript style to just do it for us. Thank you, guys, and see you in the next one. Goodbye.